Well, school kids might be able to tell you about the Inca, the Mayans, and the Aztecs, but did you know there was a merchant empire based right here in Kansas? That's the conclusion of a Wichita State archaeology professor after spending years at a big dig near our Kansas City. Hank's Pilar Pedraza shows us that Kansas Empire new at 6.30. The fact that that can change the way we viewed the indigenous people of this area is is mind blowing. From pottery shards to hide scrapers and specialized arrowheads, it's a giant puzzle Dr. Donald Blakesley and his team at WSU have been piecing together for years now. So this would have likely been placed direct fire cooking. The story they tell. So different things can tell us um, if it was placed on per se a hearth or if it was embedded in a, a coal bed. One Blakesley says is changing how we view history of Kansas and of Native Americans in the United States. The forgotten heart of Native America. At Sanoa, Quivira, Great Bend, not just random villages, but an economic empire, producing goods traded from coast to coast, found as far north as North Dakota, as far south as Jalisco, Mexico, from California to Florida. A lot more complex trade systems perhaps than most people realize. Yeah, and I think that speaks to Quivira being a larger nation than what people have given it credit for in the past. It's been forgotten even here for the most part. And yet it was the most important native community, political entity in 1600. It wasn't until another archaeologist, Dr. Susan Vehick at the University of Oklahoma, figured out how to read this map that Blakesley's team finally tracked down the site of the lost indigenous city. As long suspected, it was beneath our Kansas City. That was about a decade ago. New translations of old documents added to what they dug up, he says, helped them piece together a bigger picture of who the inhabitants were. I estimate uh a nation of maybe 200,000 people in 1600, the largest by land area and population of any native nation in what's now the United States, and economically the most important one. While those who lived at Sonoa were farmers, Dr. Blakesley says it's these, the American bison, that actually made them an economic powerhouse. All across North America, people were wearing body armor made out of bison rawhide. He says they also exported bison or buffalo meat after figuring out how to keep it fresh for years, something Blakesley and his team learned from the records of Spanish explorers. Tracking all of the early Spanish expeditions, it turns out that there were constant references to this big level area with sandy soil and huge towns where people were hunting lots of cows and supplying meat and other products. Now supplying a new view of American and American Indian history right here in Kansas. Eventually, yeah, all of the school books should change. So what does this sea change in thought mean to the descendants of the Quivirans who inhabited Etsanoa? We've reached out several times to the leadership of the Wichita and affiliated tribes, but we haven't managed to make contact yet. We will follow up with them once we do. Wow, that is so interesting. And that's a pretty big change in concept. Does everybody accept it, Pilar? Well, not yet. Many say they still have a lot of unanswered questions at this point. Dr. Blakesley says that's normal, and he's working to answer those questions as his research continues. When it comes to accepting new theories like his, Blakesley says there are two mistakes academics can make. We are trained to try to avoid false data. Mm -hmm. that, that's rule number one. But there's also a type two error where you ignore what's true. And there are a lot of detailed to, details to this new theory we haven't had time to touch on in this story. We'll definitely be revisiting it and the impact it's having in the months to come. Pilar Pedraza, Cake News, on your side.